Hey guys, back again, and today we're going to have a look at automatic transmission temperatures and to see whether automatic transmission coolers actually make that big of a difference or not. So the way that we're going to do that is we have a 2020 uh, Ranger here with us. And it's absolutely stock standard. The only thing that's got on it is a tow bar and a brake controller. Um, so that's our test bed for this test. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a diagnostic tool uh, to read the transmission temperatures. So we'll do testing uh, with no weight, no towing on at all. Uh, we'll drive up the same piece of road. Uh, we'll tow it with a camper trailer and also with our boat as well and measure those temperatures. Then put a transmission cooler on it and then run those exact same tests with those same uh, tow weights and see what the difference is between them. So that should give us a really good comparison and be able to easily identify whether the transmission coolers do or don't make a difference to your tow vehicle. So we have the car completely uh, stock and we're gonna plug in the diagnostic tool and we'll take it for a run up the hill and measure what the, we'll get a baseline of what the temperatures are like for the transmission without any load on it at all. bottom of Mount Glorious, uh, we're in the Ranger and we've been driving for about five minutes or so. Uh, so we've just stabilised the transmission temperatures and at the moment we're sitting at around about 89, 90 degrees. So we're going to drive up the range uh, and watch the transmission temperatures and obviously we'll put some load on the car and we'll retest it again. So driving along, obviously when doing this testing, uh, you want to try and simulate or maintain the same conditions uh, every time that you do a test run and only change one variable. Uh, that way you can maintain a consistent benchmark and obviously it's an even or a fair comparison between each test. Um, so we're going to leave the car in sports mode, uh, let the transmission decide what gear it wants to be in and obviously you try and maintain the, the speed limit as best as possible depending on the conditions. So um, this is quite an aggressive hill that we're driving or range that we're driving up at the moment um, and it does get quite steep. Uh, so it should be a very good uh, test um, and comparison between the different loads, uh, both when we, without the transmission cooler like we are now and obviously with the transmission cooler. So we just finished going up the hill. Um, the transmission temperature actually got up to 97 degrees on the way up. Um, and we just turned around and we're on our way back down. Um, once again, we'll keep an eye on the transmission temperatures and see, uh, using engine braking, uh, we'll see if there's any temperature increase or decrease during engine braking. starting point again for our testing. Um, just from the point where we picked the trailer up to here, um, 
you can definitely tell the difference with the boat on it. However, when it's cruising along and the transmission, the torque converter is locked up, the transmission temperatures are actually the same or very similar to having the, the camper trailer towed on. It's only when the torque converter unlocks and uh, you start using that torque converter again that the, the transmission temperatures really heat up. But it's going to be interesting when we get up the hill because um, it's that short amount of period where you're under high load where you're going to do the most damage. It's not cruising along the highway where, where you don't have much load on it. So we'll just have to wait and see what the results are. There you go, that was our third run uh, with the boat on it, which would be equivalent to having a twin axle camper uh, caravan on it. Uh, and we actually got up to 110 degrees getting up there. So now that it's all done, uh, we're gonna go back to the workshop. Uh, we're gonna fit the automatic transmission cooler and we'll run these tests again. It's interesting that um, because we left it in sport, uh, the ECU or the transmission ECU tried to leave uh, the torque converter locked up as long as that as it could uh, to try and keep those transmission temperatures down but as soon as the transmission shift down um, those transmission temperatures uh, started to rise very quickly uh, as soon as it unlocked so we'll get the cooler fitted and we'll do it again Back again, uh, doing the same testing as we did yesterday, but we have our transmission cooler installed. Now, something to note, the Ford Ranger uh, has a water to oil cooler on it, so it actually uses the engine coolant to try and cool the transmission as well. Which means the engine turn, uh, transmission fluid is only ever going to be as cool as what the engine is. Obviously it can get hotter, but it's only ever going to be as cold as what the, the coolant temperature is. Now, we obviously take that off in this particular application and we put our air coolers on. So you're using ambient air to cool those down. So already um, with no load on the vehicle, we're already sitting around about 70, 72 degrees. So that's a 20, 20 degree drop uh, between the factory cooler and uh, our transmission oil cooler. So that's a fairly significant. So we're doing the same testing today as we did yesterday, obviously just with the oil cooler on it. Uh, so wait and see what the results are. So we just did our first run up the hill. Um, no load on the vehicle with the automatic transmission cooler uh, installed. A little bit hotter today, it's 24 degrees, 25 degrees today than it was uh, yesterday, but massive drop in temperature. Uh, so we only reached 77 degrees doing the same uh, hill, same gear, same uh, gear setting as we did yesterday. So that's uh, off the top of my head about a 20% decrease in temperatures. Um, so that's a huge difference. And obviously that equates to uh, transmission uh, longevity and obviously less wear and tear on your vehicle. So I'm uh, going to go back, uh, load up the vehicle with the camp trailer and do the next run. So we've just hooked up the trailer, we're on our way back up the hill again. Once again, same piece of road. Um, the temperatures have had a chance to stabilise, so with the trailer on, uh, 
been fluctuating around about 74, 76 degrees, so still quite a bit cooler than what it was with the factory cooler on it. Um, so same run again, up the hill, and we'll see what kind of values that we get. So we just finished that run with the trailer on and they were amazing results. So with the load on it, uh, so with the camper trailer on it, we got a maximum of 86 degrees with our transmission temperatures. So with the load going up a hill, the transmission temperatures were cooler than just normal driving around with no load on the vehicle whatsoever. So that's really impressive results. Um, so we're gonna go back, uh, swap over, put the boat on, uh, to try and simulate uh, having a, a three-ton camper van or caravan on the back and uh, do the run again. Last run for the day, uh, we've got the boat hooked up and once again heading back up the hill. Um, the temperatures have had a chance to stabilise again um, with the, the boat on the back and they are hovering around about that 79, 81 degrees, um, which is still better than what the vehicle is with the factory cooler on, even with three ton on the back of the, the car. Um, so we head up the hill and uh, we'll check out these results and see what we get. Wow guys, that was absolutely amazing. So even with that three ton on, yesterday we were way over 100 degrees. Um, this run up here with the transmission coolers on it, the transmission did shift a little bit different actually compared to yesterday. Um, and we got a max of 92 degrees going up there. Uh, so that is a massive, massive improvement over yesterday. Um, so the numbers tell the truth and the transmission cooler is definitely worth um, investing in and, and looking after your transmission and obviously it'll uh, help the fluid uh, last a lot longer and obviously all the components in your transmission. Don't forget, um, you can jump on our website and grab these from, direct from our website or you can find a supplier near you and pick these up from any of our uh, resellers. Don't forget to subscribe to our videos and also don't forget to follow and like us on Facebook.